Hey guys, welcome to Level 3 Theory. Um, it's Eric here. Uh, we're going to start our review of single phase AC. The reason we're doing review of single phase AC is because, well, if you want to do three phase AC, you have to have a really good firm grasp on what's going on with single phase AC. Okay, so for the next little while, we are going to cover all the things that you covered in level two, basically from after generators and motors. All right. Now in level two, it happened, you know, it took a long time. You guys did it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, in level three, we're going to go quite a bit faster. All right. We're, because this is a review. So you got to try to keep up. Okay. Because uh, you'll have forgotten everything that you learned in level two. I get that. Okay. And uh, so you're going to have to relearn it, but hopefully it's like riding a bike. Okay, guys. And it uh, comes back really quickly. The first thing we're going to, the first topic we're going to talk about here today, guys, is um, the AC sine wave. Everybody knows that the AC sine wave looks like this, so I'm going to draw it really quickly here. And, uh, you know, that uh, looks like that because of the way AC is generated, right? And so it gets generated because of the way we generate electricity in general, right? The easiest way to generate electricity is to rotate conductors through a magnetic field. And so... I've set up a little uh, magnetic field in my generator here, guys, and I'm going to put a winding in there. I'll just show it as a couple of conductors. And as I whip this winding around, I cross no flux, you know, because they're all the fluxes right here, right? No flux, more, 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 till it's the maximum amount of flux. And then it whips around down to here and it starts to get less and less flux until I'm traveling parallel to the flux here. So this conductor, you know, created this waveform this voltage you could say but then as it comes around to the 180 degree mark it does the exact same thing but in the opposite direction through the flux and so the volt you know the second part of the waveform here looks exactly the same but it's negative all right guys and so the reason ac exists guys is because we rotate conductors through magnetic fields all right, guys, and so it's just an artifact of that. Now, it just so happens that AC is the coolest thing since sliced bread, and it's really handy for motors and a whole bunch of other things, but, you know, that's really why it exists, okay, guys? Now, let's talk about this AC sine wave that we created because it has, you know, some names. There's some terminology that we have to be familiar with. The first bit of technology is what is this thing called? And it is called one cycle, all right? And the definition of a cycle, guys, is one complete waveform. And by the way, you know, I'm not going to write all this down because you already have it written down for you. It's in your workbook. If you look at your workbook that I gave you guys, look at unit one, handout one. It's the very first handout in there. You will see all these definitions and a bunch of formulas written out for you here. And so it says here, one cycle is one complete waveform. And I like to add to that, that it is from where it starts to where it starts to repeat. All right, guys. And so when I look at this, I can see it starting here. And I know this is one cycle because it would repeat right here. All right. Now, in level two, in electronics, you guys were doing rectification. And rectification, if you recall is you take this and to convert it into DC, usually with some diodes, right? And with full, full wave rectification, you would have actually taken this guy and flipped it to the top, and you would end up with, you know, a waveform that looks like this. And if you recall from electronics, that then became two cycles if you did full wave rectification, because the definition of a cycle is one complete waveform from where it starts to where it starts to repeat. And if this guy is up here, it's already repeating there, okay? And so if this was one AC cycle, if you did full wave rectification, it would become two cycles in DC up there. All right, guys? So remember that. So that's a cycle. What else do we have to talk about? Second thing is frequency. Frequency is, well, it's the number of cycles that occur per second, right? And so in... North America, we produce 60 hertz or 60 cycles per second. In Europe, we produce, they produce 50 hertz or 50 cycles per second, okay? Has to do with how fast you're rotating these conductors through the magnetic field. 
and uh, it just means that we got 60 of these white, uh, you know, cycles occurring every second if we have 60 hertz. Um, okay, frequency, number of cycles that occur per second. Uh, measured in hertz or cycles per second, same thing. Next definition, let's look at the list here, okay? So, um, the period, guys, if you recall, the period is the time it takes to generate one cycle. Now, if I'm taking a look at this sine wave, you know, this is voltage, and across this way is time. So, the question is, how much time does this take? to go from here to the end of the cycle. Now the formula, and it is in your book, your guides, by the way, the period is equal to one over the frequency. I'm gonna write it down right over here. That works because if the frequency is 60 hertz, that means there are 60 cycles in every second, and that means every cycle must be one sixtieth of a second long. And so let's just actually try that. Let's say the frequency is 60 hertz. The period for this wave, we're going to calculate it right here. It's going to be 1 over the frequency. Let's say the frequency is 60 hertz. It's going to be 1 over 60. Now if I try that on my calculator here, guys, 1 divided by 60, I notice that the time it takes for this cycle to occur is 0.01 six six seconds okay because the period is always measured in seconds so it's point zero one six six I shouldn't say it's measured in seconds it's measured in time okay because it could be measured in milliseconds and so if I wanted to convert this into milliseconds and a lot of times you're gonna see the period displayed as a time in milliseconds you know how do I convert this into milliseconds guys there are a thousand milliseconds in a second and so I'd have to move this decimal place over to the right three decimal places and so this would be 16 point you know seven milliseconds all right guys and uh, you know you can see it displayed either way but I need you guys to remember that if you're using the period in a formula you need to have it in seconds. Okay, don't leave it in milliseconds. For example, here, let's do an example here. I got another piece of paper here. Give me a second here. Let's just say, I say the period is 21 milliseconds. You know, calculate the frequency all right guys so let's do this for a second I know my formula is the period is equal to 1 over the frequency if I transpose that it ends up being the frequency is 1 over the period which means it's 1 over 21 milliseconds but the period has to be in seconds okay so that's 0 0.021 and if I calculate that Okay, 1 divided by 0 0.021 seconds, I get 47.62 hertz. All right, guys, and you would have done this a thousand times in electronics last year. All right, guys, so that's that formula right there. The period is 1 over the frequency. Okay, let's keep going here, guys. This is called one cycle. We know what the period is. If this is called one cycle, this thing has a name, and so does this thing, these little bumps. And they're not called a half a cycle. They are called an alternation. And so if I bring in my book here, you can see the definition that I gave you. An alternation is one half of one cycle. All right, guys? And... Uh, that means this is an alternation, and so is this. And uh, you'll see that little formula here, guys. Alternations is equal to cycles times 2. Let's put that down here. You know, 
I'm not doing too good here with the space that I'm allotted here, okay? So alternations is equal to cycles times two. All that means is, you know, if I had two cycles, I would have four alternations, okay? If I have 50 cycles, I would have 100 alternations. I mean, there's two alternations in every cycle. So don't be confused, okay, by that formula. It is... Uh, just allows you to calculate how many uh, alternations you have if you know how many cycles you have. All right, guys? All right, so we've defined a cycle, we've defined the period, we've defined an alternation. Um, let's talk about uh, just a couple more things here, and that is, you know, we know this is an alternation here. So what do we call this voltage here where it's maxing out or peaking? Well, it is called E max. All right, guys. And uh, could also be called peak. Okay, it could be either way. If you see if you see a question on your homework that says the max voltage is this, or the peak voltage is this. Those are exactly the same things, okay? And so don't get confused about that. Now there's another peak, it's the negative peak, it's right down here. In an AC sine wave, the positive peak and the negative peak will be the same, okay guys? So the peak is the amount of voltage from zero here, this would be zero, up to right there, okay, at the peak. Or it's the amount of voltage from zero here, down here to the negative peak. Now there's another uh, thing that we could talk about and that is the peak to peak voltage. Now the peak to peak voltage is the voltage from there to there. And in an AC sine wave it is always twice the peak voltage, okay? So if E max for this guy, guys, was equal to 170 volts, in other words I was looking at a sine wave on a scope and I noticed, you know, count divisions up, notice that the maximum is around 170 volts, then um, E peak to peak would be 340 volts. All right, guys? So we're going to stop the video here, and uh, we're going to talk about a couple more things in the next video. So hang in there. Come back to the next video. Okay, guys?